What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. It's time to take control of your Osmo Pocket. Now, you know I love my Osmo Pocket. It takes some unbelievable good footage, and then you can just put it on your computer, edit it up. It's really awesome, and it's super small, and it gives you that super stable, silky smooth, cinematic-like footage uh, because of this gimbal here. Now, this little accessory port right here on the front, and as you can see, I'm going to take this out has a little lightning slider connector that I can use to connect to my iPhone. And that's good because they are sending out uh, firmware updates pretty quick here. But it allows you to put in some other accessories here. And this is the Osmo Pocket Controller Wheel. And I picked this up specifically because of, um, you know, how much finer control this can potentially give me when I am shooting. And the reason that I picked this up is because if you saw my video about the Osmo Mobile 2 gimbal where you can put in your smartphone, the cool thing about that is that it has a little like thumb pad on it. So there's a little like joystick and that'll allow me to swivel it around and do some things that is, I don't know, just a little bit finer control and a little quicker than moving the gimbal around and waiting for the head to catch up. And that's really what I've noticed on here, especially if you put it in follow mode, and I'll show you some of that. But if you put it in follow mode, what that means is when I have it powered on here, let me see if I can show you, it should be in follow mode. And I move it from side to side like this, you can see that the head moves with it, but it moves slightly slower. Where I really notice this is in the up and down. So if I move it, you can see here, kind of moves around slowly. And especially if you're trying to catch some action over here and I quick swivel this thing. Now it does move this, it does kind of move generally 80% pretty quickly, but then it kind of really slows down that last 20% so that you don't get this jarring back and forth movement. And that's really good for viewers, you know, because it doesn't really, it's not really as scattered and kind of like that high motion, fast cut type of video. But what it does is it kind of means you're centering on things a little late and um, I thought that was, whoa, what's up? That's funny that I got it in the flip. I'm gonna show you that in a second here. But where I really noticed it is, there we go, all right, um, is in the up and down. It really, let me see if I can show you here. You can see here how long it takes to kind of equalize back to where I'm looking. I don't know if that's coming across, but I really noticed it when I was doing my Shinola video that, you know, when I wanted to look at the ceiling or kind of where, you know, someone was showing me something, I was moving the camera around and there was just that little bit of slowness to it. Anyway, all right, so hopefully that is all fixed by the controller here. Ah, uh, the, the uh, pocket does not stand up very well on its own. Okay, um, I almost screamed like a little girl and uh, my buddy Dave saw one of the videos where I did and he was making fun of me. So I'm gonna scream like a man from now on. You can see it's got a pretty big bulbous hump on the side here. We've got a pretty nice angled cut right there. QR code there, I'm not sure why. We have a nice little uh, textured wheel. It does not go any further than where I'm moving it here. So it's kind of up, down. Uh, you might have to calibrate it because the way it sits in the middle might not be exactly what it's reading there. You have a little switch here so you can control and switch between the axes. Now, I get why they kind of did this and because of the packaging and all that, I guess I would have probably liked a trackpad here, like that joystick on the Mobile 2 better so that I don't have to decide between left and right and up and down, but it is what it is. You can see here it'll slide into that unit uh, or that accessory port right here. So I'm just gonna put this in because then the cool thing about this and probably the drawback to it is that it's not blocking the bottom part of the screen, but just like any tablet or anything, or you know, iPhone with a case on it, when you start putting stuff around it, if you need to swipe up, it's really hard to kind of register that. But because of the way this controller works, you get actually, I think, the two most important functions with these two buttons. So let me just, so it shows controller wheel connected here, and we are on the side to side. Um, and see, what I don't really like about it is that, I mean, you'll get used to it. I do like how quick it is, man. I've never even used this, obviously, right out of the box. So, man, that is pretty quick, and I don't even have to move my hand, you know, kind of these weird motions to do that. Man, it does seem calibrated right away. But up and moving a controller wheel up and down to move left and right is not necessarily super intuitive. This is more intuitive to me, up and down, although it's, it's reversed. I guess it's 
logical move. So if I pull it down, it goes down. And if I push it up, it goes up. I guess that's all right. I mean, I guess it just depends what you think is logical, right? So kind of is what it is, but huh. that's cool. All right. So this button here, if I just hit it, what it shows me is it's going through the different modes, tilt locked, first person, follow, uh, which is kind of the one I use a lot, but honestly, tilt locked, and I'm gonna go uh, visit um, uh, some spots on campus tomorrow, I'm gonna show you that. Hopefully we'll have the video up in a day or two, but I'm really excited about showing you that. But it, because I'm gonna be in a crowd uh, with people here uh, pretty soon, the tilt lock is what I'm gonna use because I'm not sure where I can put my hand to get a good shot. So that's kind of cool. So I love the fact that I can just quick scroll through you know, these, these, um, you know, kind of shooting modes. Now this button too, let's see if we can do it. Boom. Flips around. So I go immediately into selfie mode. What up or not? This one does it too. And I'm assuming one, two, three, we'll still flip it around. What up? One, two, three. But the problem with that is it's like one, two, three. I mean, it's three clicks. And right here, you've got it in one click, which is pretty cool, especially for this camera being, you know, maybe like a, a vlog camera, a vlogging camera. I think that a one touch button to flip it back and forth is really awesome. So we do have up and down here. That's pretty cool. I guess it'll just take me a little getting used to. You might be able to change some of these things in the settings. But anyway, that was a long look at the controller wheel here. I am pretty excited about this thing. I think this is going to uh, drastically help improve some of the footage that I get just to make it a little bit more in sync with maybe some of my um, narrations or voiceovers and uh, you know kind of allow you know some travel on the shots to happen a little quicker than they are now pretty cool it does make the Osmo pocket get a little more bulky uh, this thing is just a smidge under 60 bucks and so far I think it's it's worth it but it does bring my overall controller here uh, the pocket and the controller to over $410 so we are talking about if you accessorize this thing up you are starting to get kind of into kind of higher price camera realm but so far I love it check it out links to everything in the description Peter Rompand out